Hi there, welcome back to Pretty Much Flawless. Today in this video, we're going to be looking at oscilloscope probes and how to use them. Let's get into it. Remember, line voltage can kill you, and I am not responsible for anything you try to do. If you see it on my channel, I'm trying to take most safety precautions. So what is an oscilloscope probe? Is it just an over glorified piece of wire? Maybe, but it takes some engineering in order to get a very good oscilloscope probe. So, there's a few things you have to take into consideration when designing an oscilloscope probe. Bandwidth, what's the frequency range the probe can take, and interference, you really don't want much interference, you only really want to see your, the signal that you're measuring, not really any interference. For example, when you screw in an LED light bulb and some fluorescence, they have a switch mode power supply inside which chops at a very high frequency, and that can cause a lot of interference. So one thing that they do to stop that is use a coax. So a coax is basically something that has a center conductor that has a dielectric, an insulator basically, and on the outside you have a metal braid and that's normally connected to ground. And that can help clear up a lot of signal interference. Still there will be some interference but that can help clear up. And normally on the outside you have a rubber shield just to protect everything from like water and stuff like that. So that's one of the things. So you have to be careful when choosing a coaxial cable because at a frequencies higher than this uh, specified signal loss can be too much. For example, let's say we had a 10 megahertz oscilloscope probe. That coax cable is probably um, probably pretty good. It's probably good for 10 megahertz, right? But if we try to use the coax with 100 megahertz, the signal loss might be too much. All right, so if you're wondering where I keep my oscilloscope probes, I have this very nice lab sign here. And then, I'll start to head downstairs here. And there we go, there's where I keep all my probes and everything. It's kind of useful to store them right there. So then, when I'm walking downstairs, I'll decide what I need. Here we go. That looks like a good oscilloscope probe. All right, so here's our oscilloscope probe here. You can see we have this, uh, our coaxial cable. We have our BNC connector that uh, plugs into our oscilloscope. And then here we have something interesting, a 1x and 10x switch. So we'll briefly explain what that does. All right, so now we're back up here to discuss what 1x and 10x probes are. So a 1x is basically where it pretty much just takes a signal and feeds it right into the input of your oscilloscope. And 10x is where it has a 9 mega ohm resistor in between your circuit you're scoping and then your input of your oscilloscope. All right. So, now we can plug our oscilloscope probe in. Try some experimenting. So, you see this 1x, 10x switch? What we'll do is hook this up. And you can see right now we're in the 10x position. If you were to flip it to 1x, you see it going off the screen. We'll have to zoom out. And there we go. So now if we were to flip it back to 10x, you can see the signal is much smaller. It's not triggering properly. There we go. So, there you go, you see it's much bigger now. So, what that 10x does is it divides the incoming signal by 10. And if you're wondering why this would be useful, well, a few applications is you can zoom in more on the signal. You can see right now 10x, we can zoom in more onto the signal there. Get a closer look at it. If we just had the 1x, then you can see it's uh, really big and we couldn't really zoom in any more than that. So, that's one of the Evangelist. Another one is you can get a higher voltage range. So over here, you can see my uh, maximum volt per division is five volts per division, as you can see right there. And you can see here, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight divisions on the vertical of my oscilloscope. So if I want to uh, measure, I don't know, let's say 120 volts. I couldn't do that because 8 times 5, that's 40, I can only measure 40 volts without going on the screen. So using a 10x probe, which would divide the incoming signal by 10, I could measure up to 400 volts on my screen. And that actually works out pretty good because my uh, oscilloscope input has a maximum of 400 volts. So, alright, so other things you can use your oscilloscope probe for. So. 
basically using this what we do is we have our alligator clip this will connect to our normal ground point on the circuit now remember this is connected to ground so you got to be very careful when probing like 120 volts you don't want to hook this onto the 120 volts because that can short it out right to ground and that would be uh, very bad for your oscilloscope probe and for your oscilloscope you don't really want to be doing that so when uh, probing 120 volt signal what you can do is you can just hook this to the hot and then you can just look at it there because the hot has a respect to ground and then the oscilloscope is grounded and that will uh, work good so in a typical cases that you connect this to the negative of your circuit and then you can probe around either using a clip here or using this pointer you can just kind of go around poke through some stuff and just be mindful this is also connected to ground right here so you have to be a little bit mindful of that and coming to this end we have our BNC connector and then we have that there's a hole there and what that will be for is for a uh, confiscating the probe and we'll show you how to do that in just a minute all right so let's look at the oscilloscope screen now so now we can put the BNC end onto our oscilloscope there we go and now what we'll do is we'll click this uh, thing onto the calibrate position and normally you don't have to worry about any uh, grounding because normally the negative of the calibrate is already connected to ground but if not most oscilloscopes will have like a ground thing so you just put that right there there we go so now we can see a sine wave here we'll zoom in a bit more there we go so now what we can do is we can confiscate our probe so what we'll do if we stick this into this hole I was telling you about earlier and we can turn it this way and that uh, isn't the signal changing it's just uh, the capacitance changing on this probe so we can zoom it out we can go over just a little tiny bit but uh, this is a, a probe that has a capacitance tuning range of 30 to 10 picofarads and this is a 25 picofarad oscilloscope input it's 25 picofarad so we'll just calibrate that to get a nice straight line I'd say that's pretty much flawless right there. So now we can also count the divisions here. So between here and here. So that'd be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And this is at the 10 millivolt scale. So that's 50 millivolts. But since we're on the 10x position on our probe, then we multiply that by 10. And that's 500 millivolts or 0.5 volts. Exactly what our calibrate said it would be. That's good. So now if we were to try it with 1x, here, let's flip it over to 1x. So you see it went off screen, so we'd have to zoom out. And it'd be the same thing. You can see there, or that'd be 100 millivolts per division. Here, and then we count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that is 5 divisions there. And that would be 0 0.5 volts. So or 500 millivolts so you can do that with the 1x probe it just gives you a little bit more voltage range and probably a little bit better because so you will flip it over 10x and you see it's much smaller so we can zoom in more get a close look at the signal thanks for watching this video today hope you learned something if you did please subscribe that would really help my channel but before we say goodbye here's something to think about do you think herdage should be a word for example, you have voltage, amperage, wattage. You think herdage should be a word? As you can see here, I have a 100 megahertz oscilloscope. But let's say I wanted a higher herdage oscilloscope, like 150 megahertz. Higher herdage. Herdage, very good word. Let me know if you think that'd be a good word. And I'll see you next time.